Hello again, security community. Welcome to another video tutorial to help you get started and make the best of service now. My name is Eric Ferron in Santa Clara, California, and my guest for this new episode is, once again, Luc Casper. Luc is Principal Security Consultant at ServiceNow, joining us from the East Coast near Philadelphia. Good afternoon, Luc, and welcome back to the show. This is your fifth episode with us. Good afternoon, Eric. Hey, everyone. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here again. All right, Luke, today you're going to tell us about notifications. What is so important uh, that it requires a deep dive into this feature of the, the application? Sure. Uh, our platform is very good at providing information and a means for anyone to accomplish meaningful work. And we want to ensure that if we utilize notifications as part of that in our implementations, that they're utilized appropriately to drive our business outcomes. For this look, so today we're going to go through a set of refreshers and then jump uh, jump into the your presentation for notification. You will remember from the previous episodes that for VR we started with your legacy manual processes that were somewhat effective but time consuming and also imperfect because they did not allow easy prioritization and resource allocation. If you follow the calls to action of the previous episodes, uh, well, congratulations, you are well on your way to level one, uh, which is showing on the slide here, and on your way to greater and better things eventually. Similarly for security incident response, the journey is almost identical. And again, if you followed Luke's advice, uh, you went live recently or you're almost uh, at level one, well done. You will also remember this slide that gives an overall view of the journey that we are on with you and uh, how to go from one step to another. And here we started to have a bit of a richer, richer experience in the sense that we've been uh, showing to you some of the steps that are needed in terms of change management and processes to make, to make progress to your, to your maturity levels. But also we started talking about specific deep dives on how to select a partner and soon, soon we'll show you what kind of training is available for you and your team and where to get the help that you need to make, to make progress. With the episode today, we're starting a new stream of knowledge transfer, which is around the technical aspects of the platform. And notification is the first one, and we will soon have episodes on reports and dashboard and uh, how, to organize, how to organize groups. All right, so um, the floor is yours, uh, Luke. Great, thanks, Eric. Uh, so first I wanna talk about notifications in the security operations space at a high level. So if we look at uh, what they are and why we need them, uh, Notifications are a way to get information that's in the platform out to recipients in another means, right? Via email, SMS, the mobile app has a neat notification feature. It's essentially a way to bring people into the platform to do work or notify people about something that's occurring in the platform. Notifications as set up generally don't allow users to opt out of receiving them before they've received one. Uh, if done properly, you are giving your users a way to let them opt out once they've gotten that email, um, but they can't opt out preemptively. Uh, and we like to keep our notifications uh, used for raising awareness or generating immediate action. And we'll go through specifically what we mean by that in the next few slides here. So when we talk about security operations notifications, we want to talk about the different types of notifications that we have and when to use and when not to use them. So first off, when most people think notifications, they're thinking an email. Uh, when you wanna use these, we have it there on the screen. Essentially, it's when people aren't already going to be in the platform and you need to tell them about something going on that's incredibly important. Uh, you can also use emails as a way to integrate with other systems and that is something built into the platform. You don't wanna use them for run of the mill stuff. You don't wanna get uh, three, four, five different emails every single day. Uh, you don't want to build a ton of email notifications for the, you know, the 5% of something that's going to happen, you know, once or twice a year. And you want to be very careful about building any emails around a record was created. You want to be very specific. And remember, I have this at the bottom of the slide. Remember, discretion is the better part of valor when it comes to emails. Very, very few people will really need more emails in their day-to-day -day work. They're already getting bombarded. Let's be careful about what we give them. Give them. Yeah. You can also set up the email client for notifications, and there's a white paper I put out on the community. You can go check out on how to get that stood up. 
but you want to use those for the ad hoc, the edge cases, the stuff where manual intervention is helpful. You don't want to use them where automation is better, right? 95% of the time, the notification should go out. Just use the automated notifications for that. And then let's talk a little bit about content guidance. And this, I think, is the one where most people get uh, a little bit tripped up, right? Once you've determined that you actually do need to send an email, you want to think about what's in that email and drive appropriate behavior. First off, you want to make sure it's branded appropriately so that your audience knows it's a legitimate email coming from a legitimate group and generally what the purpose is. You want to utilize the templates that are available in the system or that you've developed separately that allow users a little bit of extra functionality around unsubscribing to emails they don't care about or further preferences. As a rule, we don't want the email to, we generally don't want the email to be informational. We want the email to drive an action. You're sending somebody an email. You're, you're taking them out of their day for something important. Tell them what that is and what they need to do. So provide them a click through to what they need to do. You want to keep it short and simple too. You don't want three or four paragraphs of information on every email that comes out all the time. People tend to gloss over stuff like that. Keep it short, keep it simple, get the people into the platform or get the information out simply so that they can be actionable. And then be very careful about who you send things to. If you're sending them to people unnecessarily, they'll start automatically blocking all emails from the platform and that's not good for anybody. You don't wanna be spammy. You want to make sure that any data you send in any emails is allowed to be sent to that recipient list definitively because emails that are sent out of the platform no longer adhere to any ACL or privacy or security policies that are built into the platform. You don't want to send it to large groups automatically, things like that, right? Just keep it simple, keep it concise, and keep it actionable. All right, so let's get into the, the demo. Okay, so Luke, um, please take me through the steps to create great notifications. So we've gone through and we've determined based on our use case that we absolutely do need an email notification. In this particular use case, we're going to send an email every time a P1 security incident is created to our, uh, our vendor so that they can come in and help us immediately. It's the, the, the method we've determined to use uh, to escalate P1 security incidents. So what we want to do on the filter navigator is search for notifications and you'll find that there's going to be a bunch of different entries here, but we're looking for the one under security incident. Um, and so if we open that, it'll show us all of the baseline or configured in your particular instance notification setup that affect security incident response tables, SNSI tables. Uh, it does include scan requests, security incident, response tasks, etc. We can utilize one of these as a template if we wanted to, but our email notification is relatively simple. So we're just going to go click new and create a new notification. I do want to note at this time that you'll want to make sure that you're doing this in your environment, in a development environment, using the correct update set, and you want to ensure that you are in the correct scope, the correct scope for this particular use case we're talking about is security incident response. All right, so now we see the new record f uh, form for creating a notification. We want to name it appropriately. And so a name such as uh, new P1 security incident would tell us what this notification is about so that people coming back to maintain it understand. We want to put this against the security incident table because that's what we're looking at. So we're going to Go for table and type in security incident. And it's that one there. And we're going to change the category to what we believe it to be. I think we're going to go with security in this particular instance. But again, your mileage may vary on your particular implementation. And we are going to keep it as an active uh, notification. And you can tell that we are in the correct application security incident response. So the next stuff we need to fill out is when are we going to send it? You have a couple different options for send when, but the default one on a new form is what we're looking for. We want to do it when a record is inserted. So we want to check off inserted. Now we only want to do it when a record is created for a priority one security incident. So we're going to add a condition that looks at the priority field.
And we're going to say priority is and hit the drop down and change that to one critical. So now we know that we're going to send a, a notification when a security incident is inserted for priority is critical. We got to figure out who to send it to. You can send it to a defined list or individual user. You can send it to a defined group. You can make it subscribable if people want to come to the platform and subscribe to it. Or you can define it as uh, an email that gets sent to somebody or a group of somebody's that is defined in a field on that particular table. Uh, in this particular use case, we're going to unlock the groups and we're going to type in security and we're going to send it out to our security incident vendors. So we'll select them and that's who's going to receive it. What does the email contain is the last thing we need to fill out. You see that we have an email template there as our default template that comes baseline with the platform that allows users to unsubscribe if they so desire. We want to fill in a helpful subject that says something along the lines of priority one security incident opened. We want to keep it simple though. Um, and if you choose to add more information into the subject, you can do so, but for this use case, we don't want to. Now we have a very basic message that Eric's going to put in here for us that we prepared uh, and we want to keep it simple and you'll see kind of an idea of what exactly that might look like. So you can see what we want to do is we just want to provide some very basic information that says, Hey, a critical priority security incident has been created by somebody on our team. Please, Further information can be found here and we provide a URL. Now in order to properly populate this information from the record, uh, this is uh, pseudo code that I used. So what I want to do is have Eric hit the plus on fields and what this allows you to do is insert information from the record that was created into the email dynamically as the email is generated. So we want to add in the created by information. So he'll scroll down and then click created by and the system will automatically put that in uh, in there for him. So he'll get rid of the duplicate created by in the text and get rid of the pseudo code created by that I had typed in. And now when the email is generated, it will say a new critical priority security incident has been created by John Doe. You can use the uh, URI ref variable as a variable substitution for a full URL to the particular security incident or any record that generates an email in the platform. And that's it. What we've done is we've created an email message that an email notification that goes out to the appropriate people at the appropriate time that gives them information so that they can come into the platform and do appropriate work without providing too much information that might be sensitive or something too obscure that somebody doesn't really understand. Once we submit this, that notification will be active and running on the system. It is all here. Well, thank you very much for this, Luke. So, you know, I'm trying to take a couple of steps back and I think, you know, I'm thinking of the world we live in today with this information overload and I think, again, the, that's, that's really what calls to me the importance of uh, accurate and thoughtful notifications to really be able to call in real time effectively what is critically important. My main takeaway really for today is that the mastery of notification and the notifications feature will probably be quite decisive in terms of people's and companies' businesses' journey on, on reducing the risk, the risk profiles. It's definitely something to pay, um, to pay attention to for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So, okay, Luke, what, what, should, um, what would you recommend our audience does right now at the end of this, of this tutorial? So what you want to do is before you go create a new notification, you want to make sure that you stop and you clarify the business need, the actual desired business outcome, the value of that notification you're thinking about. And it's okay to drop it on the floor and say, you know what, we don't really need to think about it. Uh, once you've determined that, yes, we do need a notification, you wanna understand your notification audience and what kind of information it is that they need in order to be successful in their job and to help protect your organization in today's world. And then finally, 
go about building your notification. Make sure that you take all of these steps into consideration and you're careful following your normal development practices and, and your uh, testing procedures before you take it into a production environment. Very good. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. We are at the end of this episode on notifications. And a few quick reminders before we close. Of course, the PDF version of the slides will be available in the video description on the YouTube channel and in the forum. Uh, make sure you do post your questions on the Security Operations Forum. Luke and the team will be there to answer them. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and the thread in the forum to stay up to date and to not miss the next episode of the series. Luke, thank you again very much for your expertise and your time. And thank you all for listening. And until next time, goodbye.